Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about how to do some performance tuning for your Joomla 4 sites. I'm Nicholas. Uh, I'm, I come from Greece. I am a geek and I'm mostly a backend developer, which means that I usually don't get to build that many sites. Um, I'm also a Formula One fan, so this uh, presentation is a bit racy theme, uh, racing themed, and um, I will try to tell you how to uh, best make your sites ready for pole position, which means that your site should be really speedy and come um, up on the search engine, search engine results pretty high. First of all, is the question that everybody has in their head, why does it even matter if my site is fast or not? Well, there are three things. It's the intersection of three things. It's the user experience, the search engine optimization, and the carbon footprint of your site. So it's both practical and philosophical things. Regarding the user experience, I think that these two graphs say everything that that there is to to say about that the slowest your site is the highest will be the bounce rate which means that visitors just run away and the fewer will be the pages that they are visiting if you want to have an effective site it needs to be fast and if it's fast it's also going to be a site that people are going to use more and more if you're selling stuff, even uh, if you're just showing ads, making money out of your site, this is very important. So a fast site is actually a site that brings you money and a slow site is a site that costs you. It can cost you clients. It can cost you visitors. Regarding the search engine optimization, um, search engines and social media sites avoid slow sites. They want your site to be fast. Google has been deprioritizing the slow sites and its search results since 2010. And this has only become worse over time. Um, right now, after the changes that were made this year, Google is ranking sites primarily based on what they call the core web vitals, which is not just how fast your site loads but also how fast it renders on the device and how difficult it is to render on the device facebook has been prioritizing links that load faster which means that if you have a slow site it will not pop up as uh, as frequently in the um, suggested posts and they have actively been warning mobile users if a link is slow as of last March. So if you have a slow site, not only it pops up less frequently, but also causes a warning to appear for mobile users, which are the majority of users of Facebook, of course. Um, on the more philosophical aspect, our sites have a carbon footprint. Beyond um, the, the carbon footprint of uh, of the hardware that gets into a data center, we also need to think about the energy. Data centers and the devices that uh, view our sites and all the networking gear in between run on electricity. Electricity production, of course, has a carbon dioxide footprint, even if it's uh, nuclear and renewable energy production because nuclear, uh, produ uh, nu nuclear energy facilities and uh, renewable energy um, uh, facilities like the photovoltaic cells or the, um, or the wind turbines and everything else needs to be constructed, transported, maintained, et cetera. So there is an indirect carbon footprint out of all of that. According to several studies that if you average them out, if you reduce the page size on the site by 300 kilobytes, and that site is uh, visited about 30,000 uh, 
times a day, which is just a small to medium sized site, really. It's not that big. It would save about two tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions per year, which is comparable to the emissions of a car. So with uh, an estimated seven and a half million Joomla sites, if we were to optimize them by an average of 300 kilobytes per page load, we would end up with carbon dioxide emission savings equivalent, equivalent to wiping out the entire car fleet of a small country. Like imagine if suddenly all cars in Wales disappeared overnight. That's the impact that it would have. And it's actually much easier to optimize sites than it is to uh, wipe out the entire car fleet of a country, right? And I like this quote by Ayrton Senna, the Formula One legend, being second is to be first to the ones who lose. So if you want your site to appear second in the search results, you have already lost. So let's see how we can start optimizing your site. And I say that the first thing that you need to take care is to start with a, with a solid base, with how you're going to, to, to build your site on. First and foremost, you need good quality hosting. And with that, I mean that you need a modern PHP version. Um, just to note, uh, right after I, I wrote this slide, I uh, saw a nice comparison between the upcoming PHP 8.1 and PHP 7.4. Apparently PHP 8.1 is uh, something like 30% faster than PHP 7.4. So that's why you, it, it is important that you have a recent PHP version for your site. It actually makes it much faster. Uh, make sure that they have a really good architecture regarding uh, how they, they are storing stuff on their disks. They should have SSDs or some sun storage with uh, a, a high uh, input and output throughput. Adequate RAM, otherwise your site will be swapping out to disk all the time and it will be unbearably slow. Um, they should have really good internet connectivity inbound and outbound with uh, uh, multiple redundancies so your site is never down and doesn't get congested. And you also need to consider that your site might grow or might shrink, or you may not be sure just yet how big it will be. So how easy it is to scale up or down if you have chosen the wrong hosting plan. The second very important thing is that you should aim to use a bespoke, not a pre-built template. And before I say anything else about that, I want to say that I'm not against using pre-built templates if this is all that you can use. Not everybody has the expertise to write their own template, but if you're a serious site integrator, you should at the very least attempt to make a custom template at some point, and you will find that it's not that hard. Why? Would you how uh, sorry how would you start making a bespoke template? You start by not touching your computer at all. You start by doing some wireframes to see how the pages will be laid out, how the information will be laid out on the pages, what kind of information you need. Then you create a design around those wireframes, and finally you start touching your keyboard and uh, doing all the code stuff. If you start the opposite way, your implementation will drive the design, which will drive how you put content on the site. And this site will not be as usable for the visitors. Try to avoid the all-in-one template frameworks because they add a lot of bulk to your site. They try to be everything for everyone, which means they have slow PHP code that needs to take into account all those uh, uh, cases, they have to load a lot of additional CSS and it, in the end you start adding like uh, one to two seconds of page load time and God knows how much rendering time on the device. 
study the default template in Joomla, Cassiopeia, uh, and use it as a starting point. It's a very simple to understand template. Cassiopeia is using Bootstrap 5 and uh, SCSS, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can use whichever CSS framework you're comfortable with. Just note that if you deviate from Bootstrap 5, then you will have to do a lot of template, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of template overrides even for core stuff. Um, make sure that you're using some kind of versioning such as uh, Git um, to uh, manage your progress as you're implementing the custom template. If you don't, you will reach a point where you have, uh, you, you have made uh, a big mistake and you will be thinking, oh my God, I have to start over. So source control is not just for developers, it's for everybody, it will save your sanity. And thankfully, GitHub's desktop client makes it very easy. And uh, a practical advice that I have found useful is to build either from outside in or inside out. So either from uh, the generic top part of the page, like headers, footers, stuff like that, and uh, the the outwards pages, like the home page, the about page, and then start going into the more uh, inside detailed pages, or do it the opposite way. If you go back and forth a lot, you're going to lose track and your experience developing um, a site will be less than ideal, let's say. Don't overdo it with third-party extensions. It is uh, very easy to think, oh, I have this problem, how do I solve it? I know, let's install an extension. I call it the, there is an app for that syndrome, or Tufts. It sounds like a terminal disease, doesn't it? And it is terminal for your site. The more third-party extensions that you load, the more complicated it becomes to manage your site, the slower your site becomes, and the, the harder it is to update and upgrade it, especially since smaller shops might not be around, and even uh, shops that have been around forever, like some template shops that have been around for 14 years may disappear overnight. Um, instead, try to use the core as much as possible. There is an amazing feature in Joomla, which is called custom fields. You can do a heck of a lot with that. You can also do alternate layouts for the core comp for the core articles component, which means that you can have many different content types when you combine them with custom fields. Um, and then you can do template overrides for everything else. All of that allow you to, to have some uh, really complex sites that are integrated very easily for you. You should only resort to third-party extensions when something is really impossible to do with the core itself. Like if you want to, to create an, an e-commerce shop uh, with a core, the best you can do probably is integrate something like PayPal payment buttons. But if you want actual e-commerce, you need to install a third-party extension. Um, if you want to have an events calendar, yeah, you can kind of, sort of do it with custom fields, but you cannot actually sort things by custom fields, so you'll end up using an extension. Uh, so try to, to think hard if you can do it with core, and if you can't, or if you can't even find a way and nobody can help you find a way, then okay, just go with a third-party extension. Use modules sparingly or not at all. Uh, this is an affliction, um, especially for those that come from print design, that they need to fill up space. You don't need to do that on a website. You don't need to fill up space. Nobody cares about the weather in your city. Nobody cares about uh, the list of most recent articles unless there is an actual need that comes from the visitor to see that information. If you have a million modules, they will make your site slower, they, they will make it look busy, and it will just overwhelm everybody. So every module that you are putting on your site should be very well thought out and have a real purpose, a real 
function for, for the user themselves. And now we, that we have done all the basic stuff uh, about how we build our sites and where we have hosted it, we can do some essential tune-up to make Joomla 4 faster. And I say faster because Joomla 4 by itself is really darn fast. Um, in fact, if you take stock Joomla 4 and stock WordPress and put them on the same server, Joomla 4 loads faster than WordPress and can actually do about four to five times more things than WordPress can out of the box. So that's, that's quite impressive. It used to be the exact opposite with Joomla 3. Um, so let's start by making your site nimble. In order to reduce the time your server spends constructing the page that will show to the client, try to use caching in Joomla. Joomla has an amazing caching system ever since Joomla 3 that not many people are using. Uh, the progressive caching especially is very good for the more complicated sites because it's caching little bits of, uh, of uh, what is uh, used to construct the page, like uh, the module, the, the component separately and combines them all at once. Um, if you have a really busy site that receives massive amounts of traffic, make sure that you have a good caching solution that uses in-memory caching, such as Redis or Memcast daemon. If you can, you should enable gzip compression. It's one of the um, global configuration options. This reduces the size of the data uh, of the HTML page that is ultimately sent to the browser. Uh, modern servers are actually really fast. They, they have a hardware acceleration for compression. So you're not really losing all that much time. It's not like the, the late O's or uh, the early 2010s where this might have made a performance impact. For the same reason, you should try to compress your static media files. There are two ways to do that. One is for Joomla to serve uh, pre-compressed files with uh, uh, an improvement that was introduced by Dimitris Grammatikoyanis, the Grammatico on, uh, on GitHub, as uh, most of you know him. Um, or you can uh, use your server configuration file like a .htaccess file, um, nginx configuration, or uh, IIS's web.config file to tell the server to compress these files on the fly. I would say that with modern servers, you can tell the server to compress the files on the fly. If it's a frequently used file, it will stay in memory cache, so the server won't have to compress it over and over again. It will just serve the, the file that uh, the, the web server software has in its memory cache. It, um, it should be a given that your site is using HTTPS. If not, why? TLS certificates are now free with Let's Encrypt. One cool thing that HTTPS allows you to do is use HTTP, uh, that was too many T's, right? HTTP2, the second version of the HTTP protocol. HTTP2 has a feature which is called server push. Server push is basically the server saying, hey, here's the HTML page, and oh, I know that you're gonna need, need these static resources. Here's a list of them, do you want me to send them? If the browser says, yeah, I don't have them in CAS, it just sends them directly uh, while the, the browser is still connected and uh, uh, has finished receiving the HTTP page. Why this is, is this important? Normally, browsers work the other way around. First, they get the HTTP page, the, sorry, the HTML page. They parse it, which means they take the text, convert it into a tree of objects, blah, blah, blah. Then they try to figure out which static resources like CSS files, JavaScript files, image files, and so on and so forth they're going to need. 
um, with uh, HTTP2 server push, the server says, before you even start processing the DOM, these are the files that you're gonna need. So this saves a lot of time and a lot of back and forth with the server. And this is especially important on high latency connections like mobile connections. And what do you know? Everybody and their dog is now connecting to the internet using a mobile connection. Hey, 5G, right? So in the past, using server push required using a third party extension. This is now built into Joomla 4 and using it is up to the developer. And I think that at some point we will need to do something like um, an article in the Joomla magazine to raise awareness about that, uh, which will help developers make their software faster. <clears throat> Excuse me. Downsizing your site also helps you win a speed race. You have a lot of images on your site, but probably those images are much larger than you need. And I'm not talking about just cropping them. Cropping them is one thing. Uh, ideally, you should you should have the image in several dimensions, uh, but we're going to see about that later. Um, an image in a given uh, <clears throat> in a given resolution may be bigger than it needs to be, especially if it's a, a PNG, an SVG, or a JPEG file, which is pretty much every image that, that you have. You can use a third-party tool called uh, Image Optim on your computer. You just drag and drop those files there onto that application, and it figures out how it can best process them so they can keep the same quality as the original, but a much smaller size. And you might be surprised by seeing savings between 30 and 80% in most images. And these will tend to be the images that appear on all the pages of your site. So that's a good way to uh, minimize the weight of the page itself. Um, um, whenever possible, you should use adaptive images using the picture element. This is a very cool HTML feature, which allows you to serve a different image file. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm a bit, uh, I have a bit of a sore throat these days. Um, it allows you to serve a different image file depending on the dimensions of the viewport. So if you have your site displayed full screen on a 4K 27 inch monitor, you need a massive image, otherwise it will look blurry. If you have the same site displaying on a small, let's say Android device with a five point something inch screen, you do not want to serve that same image because that image is massive. You want a much smaller one. You can do that with a picture element. This is something that you can code yourself. Uh, I have created a helper to do that, which is included in the lightning template by uh, Charlie Loader. Or you could use a third party tool like Icona by Firecoders. Uh, that's uh, another Greek uh, Joomla developer, by the way, he's uh, the guy that was maintaining uh, K2 for years, and then he started doing his own thing. It's a uh, it's a pretty good solution. It can do the uh, the adaptive images automatically for you, so you don't have to spend too much thought on it. Whenever you have illustrations. You should try to use a vector image format, which on the web is SVG, instead of uh, PNG or uh, or JPEG. These tend to be um, much much smaller than uh, than a bitmap image. And the best thing is that since they're vectors, they can be scaled to whatever size, from like 16 by 16 pixels to billboard size, without losing any definition. 
if you're going to be implementing things like rollover effects for images or uh, you want to uh, present different versions of an image like a grayscale uh, version, a full color version, don't use different images, don't use uh, uh, the good old fashioned image rollover effects from uh, the late 90s, use CSS effects. Um, there's not a big collection of effects that you can apply with CSS, but they are the most useful ones. Now, I want to talk about what not to do when you're trying to optimize a site. I used to say that you should try to combine and minify CSS and JavaScript files, but this is a big no for Joomla 4. The reason we were using CSS and JavaScript uh, combining and minifying plugins in the past is that Joomla could only load them in the head of the page, which meant that they were blocking. As soon as the browser reached the point where it saw that it needs to load a CSS or JavaScript file, it would stop doing everything else. It would make a request to the server, get the file, load it, parse it, and then continue reading the rest of the HTML page. This meant that the, the ping time, the round trip time from the device to the server and back was being a major bottleneck for the performance of your site or how fast the site could be displayed on the browser. Joomla 4 does not do that. Joomla 4 allows us developers to say, I want to load my JavaScript deferred, which is to say, we're telling the browser, uh, read the HTML file, parse it, start displaying stuff. And when you're done parsing the DOM, then, and only then try to load the JavaScript file and execute it whenever you can. Um, this has the effect of making the rendering of the site faster Sounds a bit counterintuitive, but since we don't have a lot of back and forth uh, with the server, it is actually a much faster approach. And Joomla 4 itself, the core is using it, and all Joomla 4 native extensions are now using it because if it's there, of course, we're gonna do it. Moreover, in the past, all those plugins that were minifying and combining uh, CSS and JavaScript were also trying to solve all of that, all, all of those loads to the bottom of the, of the page, like right before the closing body tag. However, this was causing a lot of problems with uh, what is being loaded before something else. And it was messing up your site. You would have to be extremely careful you would have to go page by page and figure out if the rules that you have about combining files were good or you need to rework them. And that was, uh, that was a job never done. And since I've seen the comments someone is making JCH optimized, yes, it's one of those extensions and it has a million options. So you can try to work around the problems it creates by reorganizing those files. So what I'm saying is don't use any of that. The only thing that you should use, that you should do rather in your CSS files is use font display swap every time that you have a custom font. This tells the browser do not wait for a custom font file to be loaded before displaying any content. Use a system font file instead and when the custom font file is loaded, then just re-render the page. Um, if you have ever been to a site where the page loads and you see a big wall of nothing, just white and some images, and then you wait and wait and wait and wait, and suddenly, poof, all the text appears, it's because they did not use font display swap. Please don't be like that. It is very important 
especially for people on mobile devices or slow internet connections. If you have never tried to use the internet in uh, internet congestion conditions, like in a concert, do you remember this? They're from before the pandemic, they, they, they happened. I swear to God, there, it, it was places where people would go by the thousands. Uh, so you would have all those thousands of devices saturating every uh, cellular mass there was, and you would get a trickle of data. Uh, it would all. It will also happen uh, when your signal is very, um, uh, very weak. It will also happen in uh, countries and places where they don't have the infrastructure for fast internet. So please be considered use phone display swap. And now that we have done those basic stuff, we can try to supercharge the delivery of our site's content to the clients. If possible, use a content delivery network. Um, there are things like Cloudflare, which can do that for you with no configuration, well, minimal configuration. You just assign uh, your DNS to be handled by Cloudflare. Cloudflare is talking to your site. Your visitors are talking to Cloudflare or whatever CDN you're using. And the effect is that your static files are served by edge nodes, which is servers that are physically closer to your visitors, wherever they are in the world. And this makes a lot of difference because if you have, let's say, 20 static files on your site, uh, your, ser your, uh, your browser can only open up to eight connections to the server. Um, let's say that the round trip time is about 200 milliseconds. Um, if you do the math, that's uh, adding up between two and four seconds of latency just to download stuff from uh, from your server to, to the device if the, the visitor hasn't visited your site before. With a content delivery network, this uh, latency uh, goes down from 200 milliseconds to uh, a few dozens of milliseconds. So yeah, it, it's cutting down all that time massively. Uh, most CDNs also offer additional features for an additional fee that, for example, can make your images responsive um, or they can uh, automatically compress uh, static media files if you cannot do that directly with your with your web server and so on and uh, and so forth if you're using a cdn make sure that your administrator pages are never cast by a cdn if you don't do that you will have regrets uh, you will end up casting some redirections internal redirections that Joomla does and you will think that your site is broken. That's just a heads up. Uh, now let's move away from just improving the performance of your site with regards to the time it takes for machines to process it. And let's talk about what you can do to improve the performance of your site with regards to the humans that visit it. Let's be a bit serious about that. I'm not going to talk to you about uh, doing uh, crazy things that don't make sense. Like I've seen people trying to do, do uh, string concatenation instead of having an actual HTML file so they can save up on new lines uh, that, that is a negligible uh, saving. Um, some people have used minimal CSS frameworks and had to create template overrides for their entire Joomla core files. That's also something that doesn't make sense. Remove uh, jQuery or uh, or whatever. Yeah, okay, you save like 10 kilobytes and then you have to rewrite all the JavaScript from scratch. Uh, Things like that don't make sense. I, I don't care about them. I don't use them. Uh, 
I, I don't even want to talk about them. If you have the experience to do them, you're not the target audience for this presentation anyway. So let's do things that actually matter for you and your visitors. The first is how to lure in a bit more visitors, especially from social media, since this is where uh, most site visitors come from nowadays. It's uh, not that much organic search as it is people sharing something from, uh, from your site. If you have ever shared a, <clears throat> a link to, uh, to a Joomla site, you will have seen that it looks ugly on like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and whatnot. You just see the, the, the page title, a few dozen words from uh, whatever content is being picked up. Um, not exactly what would um, <clears throat> what would entice uh, a visitor of a social uh, media site. There is a solution to that. It's um, integrating open graph tags and Twitter cards to your content, which will allow all those social media sites to display um, a nice image, uh, a better formatted <clears throat> title, and the text that you want to, to include as, um, uh, as the short summary of your page. You can either do it yourself or you can use a third-party extension. Um, my wife's company, Lucid Fox, has an extension for that. It's called Social Magic. I, and I have a link on uh, over there. Uh, I am the, the developer of that. It's under my, my wife's company because she, has, uh, she had the idea. She's, uh, uh, she's managing it. She's basically running the show. I am the code monkey. Um, remember to update your site's favicons, especially in the front end. Other, uh, otherwise, you are going to see just the Joomla logo. And to me, it's really funny whenever I'm visiting a site, especially here in Greece, to, to see a Joomla logo. Um, and I can tell which site is still using Joomla 1.5, 2.5, or 3 something because the logos are different in those versions. Uh, but yeah, this is a very low effort optimization. And if people come to your site and don't see a def the default logo of the CMS, they actually think better of, of your site. Um, another thing is that the backend of Joomla, especially Joomla 4, always uses the same favicon, which is the black and white Joomla logo. And the only way to change it is by doing a media override in uh, the backend template, for example, in Atom. If you don't do that, most browsers will just display the default black and white Joomla logo only when you're visiting backend pages. But for Safari, it will be using it for the entire domain name because Safari is weird like that. Uh, so remember to also change that too. This thing cost me an hour last week. And let's do some uh, policing our nice and speedy race car. Some optional stuff that will make your site faster and a little bit easier to use. If you want to dive deeper and you are doing a bespoke template, remember to use DNS prefets and pre-connect and resource preloading. These are hints to the browser. Um, prefets means, hey, you're gonna need that file later on, load it anyway. This is useful if you have uh, like images that are displayed in every single page of your site and you're not sure if HTTP2 server push is uh, going to be available. Pre-connect tells the browser, you're going to need to connect to this external domain. So right now, open a connection to that external domain and keep it open until you actually need it. This is uh, something that you're going to use, let's say, 
if you're including analytics or any other kind of third party script that comes from a different domain than yours, uh, because by the time the browser will need to, to load it, it will have already opened the connection and things will be much faster. And resource preloading is similar to DNS prefets. I'm not going to go into the details. You can, uh, you can Google that. If you don't really need analytics, try and remove them. If you remove analytics, you're not just removing a slow script. Uh, all analytics script are, uh, scripts are rather low. They need to ping a third party server with uh, your visitor inf visitor's information, right? But it will also allow you to get rid of cookie banners because you will be no longer using any third party cookies. If you remove the cookies, the cookie banners, you're actually making your site much faster, not because it takes a lot of time to show the banner and it also annoys the user and whatnot, but also because those banners, the way they are rendered, uh, they make the page rendering slower. The, the biggest contentful paint comes at the very end of the rendering process for the page. And this has an adverse impact to your core web vitals. In other words, you will be penalized by search engines for following the law on cookies. Solution, do something so that you don't have any third party cookies. Wow, right? And something very important that uh, became very obvious uh, the past few months, do not ever use AMP. Uh, there is, uh, for those who don't know, there is an ongoing court case about, uh, about AMP and how uh, it was uh, never meant uh, to actually be any faster or provide a better mobile experience. It was just uh, Google's attempt to strong arm uh, um, advertisers and uh, people showing advertisements. Rendering AMP pages is actually much slower than serving a properly optimized site. So if you have done everything that we have already discussed in this presentation, your site will be far faster than an AMP page. And also it will work much better because AMP is also very limited. And as an optional finishing touch, I would say, if you can implement dark mode, <clears throat> excuse me, implement dark mode on your site. Um, for, for me, it's important. I use my computers a lot at night. And if I have a very bright page burning my eyes, I don't feel very comfortable. And especially for people who have uh, visual impairments and cognitive disabilities, having the option for dark mode will make their life much easier. And finally, a few words about content quality or how to make um, the content of your site better for the actual humans that are going to visit the site, not just the machines that are parsing it for search engines. Try to keep your pages reasonably sized because the bigger the DOM size is, the more HTML elements you have, the exponentially longer it will take for your page to render. Do not paste directly from, uh, uh, from, <clears throat> from a, a text processor like Word, Google Docs, or what have you because they tend to, um, to add a lot of elements, a lot of inline styling, and these make the browser's job at taking that thing and spitting out an image, basically, much harder. If you have really long articles, try to break them down into multiple pages. This is supported in Joomla since Joomla 1.0, since actually it was Mambo, um, or if even adding multiple pages doesn't help, try to convert a single article into an article series 
or uh, if your content um, warrants it into a category of its own. Whenever possible, add IDs to the headings, <coughs> even if you do not ever link to them, because it makes, makes it easier for people to create links to a specific heading uh, of, your, uh, of your content page. This is uh, most important when you have a very long article where people would get lost and you don't want people linking to your site to, to say, go to this URL and scroll 10 pages down to find that he the heading that reads such and such. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's unusable. So just use IDs. It, it makes linking much easier. And as we already said, use the right size photos and images. When you're writing content for your site, make sure that it's written with the humans that are going to be consuming it in mind, not the search engines. Uh, always consider what will be the reading level of your target audience and write your content appropriately. Like you're going to, to be using uh, much more complex words and syntax when your target audience is academics than when your target audience is uh, uh, the average member of the public, in which case the reading level should be eighth grade, or if it's kids. There is no one size fits all in the, in the writing style. Take that into account. Make sure that your content has gone through at least a modicum of uh, spelling and grammar checks. There is nothing more jarring to a native speaker or, or uh, someone who actually understands the language to read content that um, doesn't look and sound right. Uh, for me, even though I'm not a native English speaker, when I see a lot of typos, a lot of grammar errors, it uh, uh, it stops me. I, I, I stop reading the text and I'm like, this person, if they can't be bothered to run a spell check and proofread their content, why do I why do, do they expect me to consume that content? Like um, I I don't want to. It's uh, it 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 undermines my trust in them. Try to minimize any disruptions that you have in the middle of the content, like ads, videos, popovers, popunders, overlays, animations, and whatever. Especially for those of us. That, uh, that have ADHD, if there are such things on the page, you make it completely unusable for us. Thankfully, the browsers have reader mode, which remove all the distractions. But if I catch you doing that on your site, I'm not coming back. Use micro data and semantic tags. Zuma already does that. It, uh, it uh, provides this, inform uh, this information so automatic this information automatically for the core content, core articles. Uh, but you can also add additional tags when the content that you have is not just a, a blog article. Whenever you have <clears throat> external links to your site, use rel equals nofollow. Do not use nofollow comma no index. That 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 is invalid. Um, the rel equals no follow means that uh, you're not endorsing the content of the external link, um, which uh, means that if the external link goes away or is penalized by search engines, it will not affect your content. Uh, yeah. And finally, be mindful about uh, accessibility. Make sure that your site is accessible. Joomla 4 works very well uh, for doing that out of the box. Accessible means that the user that uh, that is in need of accessibility accommodations because they have 
like uh, I don't know uh, some kind of visual impairment or some cognitive disability or some uh, motor disability they can choose how your site will be best rendered for them do not try to take that choice away from them by using an accessibility overlay accessibility overlays are some um, if you ask disabled people about their opinion on accessibility overlays they will tell you that it's the devil so with all of that i think that uh, i can probably answer a couple of questions before uh, phil tells me that uh, he needs to kick me out so no, you can just take out my time at the end. So that's fine. You got you got stacks. <laughs> I just cut my bit. Um, thank you. That was really, really good. Uh, and I know there's lots of questions because I've got some of them. Um, but uh, let's let's rewind and um, and mm -hmm. see what we've got here. Uh, so, I mean, does anyone want to just come in with their questions? Uh, there's a lot of comment. I mean, several. I saw someone asking about um, uh, uh, progressive web apps, um, and you really didn't you didn't seem to push for progressive web apps. Uh, okay, so about progressive web apps, um, if you actually have a need for a progressive web app and the resources to do that, do it. But as a general rule, rule most sites do not need that um, a progressive web application makes sense when you want your site's content to be available offline off the top of my head i can think of a use case for example you have uh, a resource a learning resource that will be useful for uh, um, for students but those students only actually get reliable internet when they are at school, but they will need those, those resources when they are doing homework at home where they do not have internet connectivity. And this doesn't happen in the third world, this happens in the US, in California, right next to, to Silicon Valley. So yeah, in this case, yes, it would be very useful to make your site into a web, into a progressive web application. Perfect. But if you have a company presentation site or your own blog, what makes you think that people would want to access that content offline? This is, uh, I, I don't know what we, would you call it. It's, uh, I think uh, some, it's, I've, it's I've a bit of a hubris. Yeah, I've come across it when some companies have wanted an app. We want an app. It's like, okay, well, do you really want an app? Um, but they've been told they have to have an app, and therefore... Oh, see, see, companies may say, I want an app. The question is, do you do need, need yeah. an app? Because the, yeah. these, are, these are two very different things. It's like, um, like me saying, I want a Ferrari. Do I need it? No. Yes, clearly. Oh. If 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 I can have it, that would be cool. If I if I don't have it, well, okay, I don't have it. Um, no, that's a good so point. That's a good point. Every every everybody's asking for progressive web applications because they heard that uh, oh they are cool and uh, the content will be available offline and it's uh, great and good and blah blah blah. Okay. Does your content need to be accessible offline? Let's start with that. By whom and what for? If they cannot answer those two basic questions, then the answer is no, you don't need it. You think you want it. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they, if they actually have a use case, do you have the time and money? Because making a progressive web application is, uh, is non-trivial if you actually want to do it right. Mm -hmm. There are third-party components that uh, can convert the site into a mostly progressive web application, but it's going to be kinda, sorta, 
it's like uh, I take a stock car out of the dealership. I put a huge rear wing and install a wide body kit and say, oh, I've got a racing car. Mm. No. no. If you um, actually create a progressive web applications, yes, it's possible with Joomla 4, since we now even have a JSON API, uh, but it's going to be expensive and time consuming. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. And uh, the only one that I built, which was years ago, they never needed it, but hey. Um, they convinced. They I, made for it, right? They did indeed, they did indeed. Um, okay, so if, if they paid for it, you're happy. You, you try to save the money. They, they <laughs> wanted. Like, they wanted to give you money. Why not take it? I, and there were solicitors, so we always like taking money from solicitors. So there you go. Okay, solicitors um, have money. Have money to burn. So yes. Good. Good. Um, good. Good for you taking their money. <laughs> uh, my main client's the police, so you know, say more. Um, so the other things that come up, and one I'm particularly interested in is the um, social magic. Um, mm -hmm. This looks really interesting. Uh, now. You've got a whole series of things which we're often told to do for um, social media. So we've got the Twitter cards, we've got the OG, uh, OG uh, Open Graph. Does yeah. this do the lot or is this just featuring the Open Graph? All of, all of it. It does uh, it. Open Graph, Twitter images. Uh, we've also tested it with LinkedIn, which is uh, using Open Graph. Hmm. Um, Open Graph can actually be used by everything. It's Twitter that's a little bit weird because if you just have Open Graph, the car type that you get may not be the car type that you actually would want. That's why there is a specific integration. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything else works with Open Graph, including Slack, Microsoft Teams, and um, even Matrix, uh, which is an open source. Um, end-to-end -end encrypted, let's say, competitor to Slack. It's instant messaging. This is what we use uh, for our internal communications in our company. Um, if there are open graph tags, it picks them up, you get a preview. It's wonderful. That's yeah, for great. open standards. Yeah, this is great. So, and this is the plugin here, so we can use that. Um, there was quite a few comments about uh, third party. I'm really interested in that, that that area that you're going through. So I've been doing the same things that I do for my Joomla 3 sites to my Joomla 4 sites and finding that I'm making uh, Lighthouse worse. Um, so, and several people have made, yes. Um, and I can, you can sweat for ages and uh, it's combining CSS files and, loading JavaScript at the bottom of a page and nuking your site and all of that. So what you just said, what you went through on that talk totally rings true with what I've actually been doing, which is for the last few, last month probably, bashing my head against a brick wall because it worked in Joomla 3, but it doesn't seem to be making a difference in Joomla 4. And Joomla 3, so the re you know, the, the reason why, why CSS and JavaScript minification combination worked in Joomla 3 is that you started from a really bad, really bad base level. Mm -hmm. Everything was loaded in the head. <clears throat> the site was abysmally slow. So anything you did beyond that made the site faster. So even though the combining and minifying things had a performance impact because it had to happen on the fly and it was creating a lot of problems that you had to work around because you changed the load order of things, um, possibly, <laughs> You even had some uh, head uh, scripts, <coughs> excuse me. You had some head scripts which relied on a JavaScript file that should have been loaded, but actually wasn't. And you had to leave that, uh, that file loaded and try to minify everything else and whatnot. Um, you went through all that pain, but you did have a result because that uh, uh, not ideal solution that you had was better than nothing. Joomla 4 starts with a great base uh, situation. So you start with most of the, of the JavaScript being loaded deferred. Mm. 
which means that it doesn't need to be minified, it doesn't need to be combined. The browser will load it and execute it as needed. In fact, if you try to combine all of that, you make the, the browser's life harder because now it has to wait to load a bigger file and then parse it and run it all at once. And whenever JavaScript is, is being run, <clears throat> it is a blocking operation. The browser cannot do anything else. Every time JavaScript is active, your browser goes to sleep. It doesn't respond to user interaction. It doesn't process the DOM. It doesn't do anything at all whatsoever. So yeah, you, you're taking something fast and you're making it slower by combining files. Yeah, and that's and, what I'm finding. That is actually I, I think the difference came also up with HTTP2 because yes. uh, it can load resources in parallel. And now it makes sense to have small resources for only what you need. And that's the way Bootstrap goes. They don't have the big file anymore. They have small file for every component you use. And if you don't use it, you don't load it. But if you load five of them, they can load in parallel channels now. Mm. Yes, because now browsers can open <coughs> up to eight connections. And since it's uh, HTTP2, um, you tell the browser which files you will need and you will get them instead of going file by file and making a single request every time. So yeah, and it, is substan it is substantially faster. Mm. Yeah, if you now combine everything again into one file with the ACH optimizer or whatever, then you do exactly, the, uh, you make it worse. Yes, yeah. I can say that. You're, you're, you're trying to load a single file through a single pipe and you're, uh, you're limited by how much bandwidth the, the actual web server will allocate to a single TCP IP connection, which means that you're competing against all the other browsers that are opening eight co connections at once. This is something that, that you will barely see happening on a, on a local side since you have zero load. Um, Still, it will impact Lighthouse when it's doing its uh, um, its simulation of a of a slow network, but you will definitely see this on on a live server, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Phil, you've seen it on a live server. Mm. Oh yes, oh yes, a lot. Um, and in fact, uh, stay, staying on that meant that theme, you made an interesting point as well with PHP 8.1. Now, between 7.4 and 8, there wasn't a huge improvement performance-wise for us because most of the php was improvements were to do with mathematical like doing fractal calculations and all of that so when i saw the differences it wasn't a huge one so is there is there quite something coming in 8.1 yes uh from 7 7.4 to 8.0 the performance improvement was something like uh five percent or thereabouts not massive from 8.0 to 8.1, it is it is pretty big. They have uh, they have reworked a lot of the internals. Awesome. Um, all all the deprecations of uh, <clears throat> of PHP features that you have uh, that you have seen over the last few years have uh, the goal of making the PHP parser much more performant. Mm -hmm. So by removing all that craft. They allow PHP to be parsed faster. There are improvements in the opcast. There are improvements in how um, the bytecode is converted to machine code. And the latest benchmark said that uh, PHP 8.1 is 30% faster over PHP wow. 7.4, which is uh, significant. Yeah. Yeah. Does, uh, does that it brings the load on your server down as well. mm -hmm. What's that? Does it, does it still make sense to use opcash with PHP 8.1? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. Ah. Yes, uh, be because uh, opcash is uh, removing the parser states, converting the text to bytecode. Mm. The improvements in uh, PHP 8.1 were also in converting the bytecode to executable code. So. Um, I, from a test that I did on uh, on my local uh, side, it is faster, 
but I couldn't measure how much faster because the the paid uh, with PHP 8.0 I was getting something around 170 milliseconds per page. With PHP 8.1, the difference was about uh, 30 milliseconds, but it wasn't stati st statistically significant because I was reaching the point where the the load variations in my CPU could affect the result just as much. Right. Zoomla 4 is, is, is that fast. Mm. By comparison, uh, it, on, on this machine, that, yes, George? Uh, they said that on WordPress, they got about a 0.5% improvement, but the more OAP structured your app is, the higher the performance improvement you're going to get in 8.1. So they recommend on a heavy OAP app, which would be Joomla, you're going to get something like 5 to 8%. Oh, yeah, that, that sounds about right. So, Sounds about what I was measuring, but uh, you know, standard deviation was uh, pretty high. So my uh, uh, my confidence in uh, my measurement was low. I, I but but yeah, the five to eight percent sounds sounds about uh, sounds about right. Well, that's, um, that, and that really really helps because you know the Joomla audience seems to be more. Uh, using newer technology than some of the other CMSs that we shan't mention. So we have an earlier adopt adoption rate. So that means that we'll be able to use those and, and get ahead of uh, ahead of the, uh, the game. One other thing I'd like to use ask technology-wise before we go back to the other questions was mm -hmm. um, HTTP3 is on the horizon. I know one or two companies that are offering it. Uh, is there yes. much performance over HTTP2? Uh, I haven't been able to use it enough to make any kind of benchmark, uh, mostly because Apache currently doesn't seem to have an HTTP3 module. Um, it seems to be more of an iterative uh, uh, improvement. It's, uh, it's HTTP2 plus some elements that were uh, included in Google Squeak. Um, or whatever a subset of that uh, web uh, browser developers decided to agree on. Um, it's supposedly better when uh, you're loading multiple resources in parallel. So the way Joomla 4 is structured, it should make it faster. Right. That's but how much faster, I, I, I don't know. Uh, ask me again in a couple of years. <laughs> when it, when HTTP two came out, um, we couldn't measure directly because its browser's implementation varied so widely from its other that you could get a massive performance boost in uh, <clears throat> in Chrome and uh, not much at all in Firefox. And then at some point, all browsers caught up, and uh, all sites using HTTP two were really fast everywhere. So. Um, we had a couple of other um, things come up. I'm just going to quickly whisk through and then uh, we're ahead of. Yeah, go on. Uh, that would be the image processing library that's part of PHP. There are two options for that. You can switch between them, see which one is. Uh, is working with uh, your version of PHP? I've had the same issue when I was rendering pictures on the fly for the script that I wrote, and I had exactly the same problem with going black, and that was a uh, similar thing I had to fiddle around with to get it working. Yeah. Uh, one last question that I, I see here uh, from uh, Alex Hawker. He said, uh, a number of component module developers have abandoned Joomla. Is this commercial or down to the direction of Joomla 4? Uh, this is commercial. It doesn't have to do with uh, with Joomla 4. Um, regarding template developers, this is something that I had been saying since uh, 2010, when people were asking me, why don't I have lifetime subscriptions? Um, and I was putting my business consultant hat on, and I was saying, well, if you want to run a company, you need to have cash flow, not a fat bank account. Lifetime subscriptions 
do not give you cash flow. They give you a lot of money in a very short period of time that's, that gets put in the bank. And then these clients are your clients forever and they contribute zero to your cash flow. But you have to expand resources to update the software that they're using, be it templates or extensions or whatever, or provide support for them, provide downloads for them, etc., etc. So they cost you money over time, but they don't bring in fresh new money. So if you do that to a company, the company goes under. Because at some point, the, the expenses are much bigger than the income of the company on that year. <coughs> Plus, it's really stupid to amass a lot of money very fast because you're going to, to pay insane taxes on, on that money. Um, unless you happen to live in a country where there is a flat tax rate for companies. I mean, before the, uh, before we started, Nicholas, we were talking about, um, I was saying, have you noticed an upshift? So I happened to see the back end uh, stats for Joomla, and I know that we've doubled our download rate. And you were saying that you've actually seen quite a significant increase in your... Um... I'm already seeing a 15% adoption, so that's uh, that's phenomenal. Yeah, but that's um, for Joomla 4. And, and you know, that's for, that's well. for Joomla 4. And considering how few extensions are Joomla 4 ready, this is insane. Uh, and I, I know how few they, they are ready because I see my wife <coughs> building sites and trying to find an extension to do something. Like uh, she was looking for, for a gallery component that would uh, fulfill certain criteria. She could, found, she, she could find like two or three of them that were only Joomla 3. Mm. They were not converted yet to Joomla 4. Or she was trying to find an e-commerce extension that would also fulfill some criteria. Criteria, She could find extensions to do that. They were still working on the Joomla 4 version, as if uh, Joomla 4 hadn't released uh, release candidates for uh, for six months before getting released itself. Mm. So I've just, yeah. I've just helped fix one company's uh, bugs. I found quite a few bugs in their Joomla 4 version. Um, in fact, Joomla 4 version with PHP 8. Um, and it's like, well, hang on, Joomla 4 can work on PHP 8, so why doesn't your extension? Um, so, but, but they've been fixing them. So they are, they are fixing them pretty rapidly, but there's still quite a few out there. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've done four commercial sites on Joomla 4 so far, and it's really pushed me back to core because, as you say, a lot of extensions, you can't get extensions yet, or they're not strong enough. I tried them and I found bugs. Um, and then wrote back and, and, you know, we've gone through iterations and literally, I won't name them, but one came out today with a, an update, which was fixing a bug that I'd been complaining about for a while, but they said wasn't there. And so I had to de do a video on it. And they're like, oh, oh, I see what you're saying now. Um, but uh, yeah, so just testing Joomla 8, in PHP 8 and Joomla 4 together. Um, but yeah, it's, PHP, it's, PHP 8 deprecated a lot of stuff. It has uh, yeah. caused me some headaches. <clears throat> because some of the stuff that they deprecated are not very easy to root out in code, especially if that code uh, has existed for uh, 16 years. Mm. Mm. It's uh, yeah. it's uh, it, it's quite a problem. And uh, some of those things, uh, some of those deprecations have to do with uh, type safety. So things that um, would happen extremely infrequently and throw a warning that nobody saw in PHP 7.4 are now fatal errors. So we've had uh, quite a few of them. I mean, we're one year into PHP 8 and uh, up to two weeks ago, I was still fixing some PHP 8 issues. At least with PHP 8.1, the deprecations are far clearer. It will be easier for us developers to, to root them out. And that's what I did with uh, with, with Joomla 4 and found that somehow only four files needed a minor change. Mm. <laughs> that was, mm. uh, that was lucky. Um, I'm seeing Ian, your scores, I was going to say all the ones I've done out of the box have been green in the nineties for everything. Uh, in fact, the SEO, you've got to put in your, um, if you, there is no standard 
uh, description anymore. We used to have the same description, and all journal sites said exactly the same thing because no one bothered to change it. So because it's empty, you get uh, straight away a big decrease in your score. That's literally just putting in the standard uh, description. So you've got your own description there. Um, and performance, I'm always getting 95 to 96 straight out of the box. So yes. it, it looks like it's your server on that, in that case. Um, and you might want to have a look but at But Ian is just posting something else in the chat. Yes, 56. Which 56, is, I'm surprised. Yeah, because uh, 90, oh, I've never got under 90 with a uh, bank on. And I, I put in the Joomla.org um, one because... I don't know which user from caching maybe. No, I don't do no, I'm talking out of the box. Um literally out of the box I get into the mid nineties. And then I put on um caching and stuff. Um and Joomla 4, by the way, uh, uh, uh Joomla.org slash four, um if you go to that, the landing page that Benjamin built, that's actually um uh Cassiopeia. Um it's just with overrides. So you know you can do a lot with the overrides. Um we literally scrabbled that literally days before Joomla came out. So uh, um, I've, I've done some really amazing things with uh, template overrides. Mm. Um, I have uh, changed the Joomla standard profile page, which looks like someone has uh, vomited a lot of contents <laughs> on different lines. I've made it into a professional looking actual user profile page. All right. Uh, it wasn't that hard. It was actually quite trivial. And at some point I will uh, I, I will share the the thought process that went into that. Um, yes, I, I, there is a backlog of uh, blog posts that I want to write. I didn't have the, the time yet. Uh, okay. Yes, eventually I, I will. Uh, I, I see Gary's message, can you share that over it? Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to. Once uh, <clears throat> I manage to uh, to launch uh, my site on Joomla 4, uh, I was, uh, I'm still waiting for uh, one small bug with regards to site ground to be fixed. And then I think that I will be able to, to do some actual testing and launch the site. So you will be able to to see how it looks, and then I will share that over right. Well, that's great, thank you. Unless there's any other questions, um, I can say big thank you. And um, oh, okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> my my daughter is uh, almost four. She went to preschool this year, and of course, after two years of a pandemic, she hadn't gotten in contact with other kids for those years. Now she's bringing back all the all the common cold uh, viruses. Um, I've gone through most of them myself as a child. So I have antibodies. I don't get fevers. I don't get anything. I just get a sore throat and uh, blocked sinuses. It's um, part of the fantastic experience of being a parent. Uh, but it's uh, it's totally worth it. I uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, all 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 that is uh, is worth a hug from her. So yeah, um, it's just uh, very uncomfortable trying to do a presentation with a sore throat like that. I've actually taken capture before on the presentation. That's why I'm able to talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. I already covered that and I said that um, if you are a regular user, I'm not against using a pre-built template. Um, however, if you're using a pre-built template that's using a framework which is designed 
to be the back end of, uh, um, I don't know, seven dozen different templates with completely different designs and different goals across four different CMSs, performance is going to suffer a little bit. You're never going to, to hit the high 90s in, uh, in performance. Uh, it is what it is. You really can't do much about it. Um, as for uh, uh, whether Cassiopeia looks good or not, you don't really need to make a lot of template overrides to, to make it look good. It's based on Bootstrap 5. Bootstrap 5 is a very nice abstraction around CSS Flexbox. If you read literally one page which explains CSS Flexbox, and then you have the design and try to think of it as boxes connected to each other, you can convert it to Bootstrap 5. Uh, I'm not a front-end designer. I'm not even a site integrator. I'm a back-end developer. The, the design of my business site right now, I was able to convert it to Bootstrap 5 using Cassiopeia as the starting point within three and a half days. And really, I suck at making sites. I am horrible at front end. You don't want me to do those things. It took me three and a half days. So I'm pretty sure that if someone goes beyond the level of a newbie into the level of tinkerer, let's say, not power user, just starting tinkering with things, they can do amazing things with just Cassiopeia. Until they do that, they will have to use a prepackaged template. But they need to shop around and find uh, forms well. How would you know? Well, you have uh, your uh, Chrome browser or your Edge browser, right? Go to the template developer site and visit the find the template that you like and visit its demo page. And then run Lighthouse on it and see how it performs. And do that on, on all the templates that are candidate for your site and see which one performs best. That's that's really an easy way to, to find the best performing template that you could work with. Um, you should also keep in mind that the implementation you see on uh, the template developer's demo site is not what you're going to get as soon as you install that template on your site, which is a very non-obvious point and applies equally to Zoom and WordPress. What you see on, uh, on a pre-built templates demo site is an entire site built specifically to demonstrate all the nice features of that template in a visually appealing way. This is literally their job. They try to, to make things visually appealing. Um, how you're going to use that on your site is a, is a different question. You may be able to achieve a similar result or you may not. And speaking again as someone who absolutely sucks at building sites, in the past, I have used a Rocket Team template that looked amazing on the demo page. And when I tried implementing my site with it, it looked like someone had pooped on the screen. So. Um, yeah, no matter if you go the template override way or the pre-built template way, you will have to put some work to, uh, turn your vision into an actual working site. What is, uh, the process? Well, that depends on you and what you're comfortable with. Some people prefer using site builders because all they can do is click around and they don't want to mess with uh, with CSS and template overrides and whatnot. Sure, okay, you can do that. It will be slower than using a pre-built template that needs a little bit of tinkering with the CSS, which will be slower than using a bespoke template. Um, it's the same as trying to, to buy a suit, really. 
you can buy an off the off the rack suit. It may fit you or may not. It uh, uh, if if you have uh, weird white hips like I do, it may look like you're wearing a, a sack of potatoes, right? Um, or you can buy a custom suit which uh, will look much better on you. Uh, or you can go a full bespoke a full bespoke suit route, and I believe that uh, as a user user group London, you're uh, uh, familiar with the concept of bespoke suits. So I need to say no more, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, definitely, definitely. And and this is the meet and two veg of a lot of the people that uh, come to Jim London. Is they they do this sort of work for clients. So um, if the uh, pre built things could do everything, we'd be out of a job. Um, hmm. Yes, or finding that they haven't implemented that one feature that you know that Joomla can do, but they didn't bring through in their layer. So yeah, um, things. Anyway, we do need to move on, but thank you so much for that. That has been awesome, and uh, I've certainly learned a lot. Do you have um, uh, the um, uh, slides at all that people could? Um, get a hold of or just as an aid memoir for all the different bits uh, that you mentioned. Sorry, let me swap back to that. Uh, oh, lovely. Yep, brilliant. So the <clears throat> these are the links from the previous version of, uh, of this presentation and the, the article series because I didn't have the time to convert this to PDF yet. So the, the presentation is the one that I gave a few months ago uh, for Joomla Day US, it has uh, <clears throat> it has uh, some stuff about Joomla three as well. But I also do mention Joomla four, which was still in uh, release candidate. Yes, it was release candidate back then. Um, the article series is the one that I wrote last year. It talks about both Joomla 3 and 4. The, the new series that talks only about Joomla 4 will be in the Joomla Community Magazine, and the first installment will be in the November issue. Right, Philip? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. Um, the awesome. first of many. Awesome. Yes. Uh, I, I plan to, to do a five-part uh, five series just like uh, the original one. Um, okay, so that's it from me. <laughs> Have fun and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. <laughs>